Welcome back again to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about or we're going to be going through another task from Advent of Cyber 1, task 14, day 9 requests. So in this task, we will be using Python programming language to uh, parse and retrieve web requests. So basically, you can, what you can take out of this task is using Python with your day-to-day -day web request, your day-to-day -day web browsing. So of course, it's not going to be a, a comprehensive and inclusive of every scenario you might encounter, but it still uh, might contain a bit of value that you might build on while using Python for browsing the web or iterating through some web requests or whatsoever. So what is this challenge about? So basically, we have a URL. And in the URL, as you can see, when I access the page, we can see that we retrieve JSON object. The JSON object consists of key value, key value. The first key is value, and the value of it is S initially, and the second key is next, and the value of it is F now. This is indicative that you, you need to put slash and the next value, which is F. So put slash F, and you will retrieve or receive another object. As you can see, the value now is C, and the next value should be S. So we put S here, and we receive another uh, object. So what's the purpose of all of that? The challenge is saying that um, you will, let's put end here, try. No, there is no end. Okay, put F. All right, so what's saying here, we're going to, in order to retrieve all of the data on the web server, we will have to make the key next and the key value. Both values need to be, or need to have the value of end. So value needs to be end, and next needs to be end. In order for this to happen, we will need to iterate through the values of next every time. So every time it changes, we need to put it back here. So S put S, A put A, and keep iterating until you reach the value of end for both next and value. And that is uh, a tedious and a repetitive task. So you might want to consider using programming language to accomplish this purpose. So we're going to use scripting language, which is Python, to iterate through next, right, and value. Whenever these two keys are equal to end, right, we're going to print out the results. So let's build the script and see how this goes. All right, so let's open command line. No, no, say day nine, m.py. Okay, then. So we're going to start with um, the shebang. So shebang user Now, next we're going to import the necessary modules in case we in case we're dealing with because we're dealing with a HTTP server, we will have to write import or import the request module. And then we will define the parameters. The first two parameters are the path and the host. So the host is constant. The IP and the combination of the IP on port. So we will define here the host equal and next we will define the path. The path will be empty for now. Okay. Now we will define the key here. The first key is value. Right. Now how we will how we will retrieve the value of this key is by retrieving the response of the request. So whenever we access the page, we receive different value. We're going to store this in the in another parameter that holds 
the value of the hold request. So here, for starters, we'll type value equal empty. Now let's build while loop to iterate here path, and we will need to continue right all the way until path is equal to end. So we will say enter the while loop and keep going until or as long as the path doesn't equal to end. That's how we will stop when the value equals to end, which is required as in, as required by in the challenge. So here we will type response. In the response, here we will we will access or we will store the result of the get request we will make. Here we will store this value or this you know the response. We will store it in a response parameter. Requests dot get post plus path. Okay. Yes, so the response here, as you can see, we will retrieve the value of the get request and store it in the response parameter. Next, we will print the response, the value. So we will keep uh, monitoring what is the response every time. Response, response, all right. Now, the next thing, we will use JSON, all right, to parse the response. So we use a JSON function called JSON. So here we will put first response equal response dot JSON. Okay. Now, as you can see here, so far we are making the request, storing the value in the response, printing the value, and then parsing the value with JSON in a separate parameter. Next, we will need to work for, with the value and the path parameters. Now, as you know, the value here, parameter, or the value key, should be equal to the older value, which is this one, right? Um, plus, say, the response here. So we take this. Of course, not the whole response. We will specify parts, part of the part of the response, which is the value. So what I'm doing here, as you can see, I'm taking the old value here, right? And I'm adding the value retrieved from the get request, right? This one. And store it in a final um, variable. Next, the path variable will equal to the same response, but we will take only the key, but the key next from it. So next. So this variable contains the value of the next key. And as long as it doesn't equal to end, this loop will continue. And then we will print the path. And then, oh my god, my WhatsApp value. I will mute my WhatsApp. It has become very irritating. OK. And finally, here, print the value. So our aim here is to reach the end value for the key next. That's why here, as you can see, every time we are making a web request, right, storing the response in a response parameter, parse it, and store the result in the parse parameter, parse value uh, variable. And after that, we take the value of the key here, which is value, and store it in the value parameter, the value variable. So this one every time changes, and every time it adds the older value. So for example, the, the current value now is i. In the first 
iteration, the value here will be equal. In our case, or this, or this, uh, at the moment, it will be i. Next, let's access d. It will be p. So here, it will be i plus p, right? The path, as you can see, equals the next key. And the next key changes every time. And we store the new value in the path, um, say, the path variable. So whenever we access the web server again, it will access the new value here from this. This will continue all the way, right, until we reach the value of end for this variable. Then we print out the results, and that's it. Let's see if this can work. So we'll go 5.3, day. Missing parentheses in call to print. Let's check it out. So here we will have to add, because we're using Python 3. Just add this. Let's see here. So what happened here? As you can see, we have the first, we have F for next, and we have S for value. For next, here the value is S, and the next equal to, oh, sorry, I'm confusing. So here, as you can see, value equal to F, and next equal to S. Next, we have S for, the, let's check it out, it first prints, uh, it first prints the path, which is ah, uh, so here is the value of next, 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 all the way till it reached the end. So what happened here guys, as you can see, the value here was first s, right? The next request we added C to S all the way till it formed, as you can see, <laughs> uh, a full word or meaningful word, right? And here the value of the next key we iterated, repeated the request all the way till we reached end, right? But you, you, you cannot just here go ahead and type end. Because this value, if you type end here, it's not going to work, right? It doesn't exist. It only exists after you iterate through a full series of web requests and you reach the script kid and it, kiddie, right? Until all the way to D here, script D, and then you have end. So both they need, they need to be both end, right? But only one. So next and value. Both need to be end. If you just try to type end here, you are setting the value of the key next to end, but the value here or the key value doesn't equal to end. That's why it doesn't work. So we have to do the uh, Python script to iterate all the way till you reach this. Now, if you take this and try to answer with that, let's check it out. Where is the page? Not here. Not here. I'm just trying to find the page. All right, so it seems to be here. Okay. Let me refresh the page. The answer is incorrect. What's the value of the flag? 
seems interesting. Script kid. Oh, without the end. Right? Let me let me let me try it. Without the end. It worked. So there's no end here. Only the script kid. Okay. So there you have it.